Hello, I'm Daiki Morinaga from University of Tsukuba and Riken AIP. Today, I talk on the one plus one evolution strategy, which is continuous black box optimization algorithm, and show its convergence rate on a general convex quadratic function. I introduce evolution strategy. It is recognized one of the most competitive class of optimization algorithm in the field of black box optimization problem such as simulation-based optimization. Particularly, the state-of-the-art variant, CMAS, is demonstrated to be highly efficient, both in real problems and benchmark problems, which is adapted to, for example, adversarial attacks on face recognition, generation of master key for fingerprint authentication, or generation of game stage like Mario. CMA is short for covariance matrix adaptation, so it adopts a covariance matrix C of its sampling distribution of this normal distribution with mean M and C. At the moment, among the theoretical convergence analysis on ES, in fact, there is almost no major convergence guarantee for ES with full covariance matrix adaptation, including the semi ES. Recently, the only work of its kind is presented for HES. Generally, potential and limitation of ES on each class of problems are hardly proven compared to other classes of optimization algorithms such as gradient methods. At the moment, the 1 plus 1 ES, which is the oldest variant, is under active investigation as we see in the next page. This figure is the current situation of theoretical convergence analysis on the 1 plus 1 ES. The vertical axis is the assumption on the objective function, and the horizontal axis shows what is proved if we assume it. Each item indicates each study. Let's see lower right. It assumes a portion of convex quadratic function and 10 assumes isotropic convex quadratic function. And they show an upper bound and lower bound of the 1 plus 1 yes on such class of functions. 11 assumes strongly convex and elliptic smooth function, which is a subset of convex function. And 9 assumes homogeneous function. Here, homogeneous means all level sets has unique shape. And they show linear convergence. Linear convergence means, roughly speaking, the progress is at least constant. And in 2020, 12 assumes a class of the objective function wider than convex function and shows uh, convergence to local minima in the limit of running time. Then. Our position is here. We consider the optimization of the 1 plus 1 yes on a general convex quadratic function and show upper convergence rate and lower convergence rate. I'm afraid to say they does not match. Next, I explain the behavior of the 1 plus 1 yes in this figure. This is two-dimensional search space. Blue line is the level set of the objective function f or the function landscape. And this black point is the optimum of f. And the 1 plus 1 yes exploits the sampling distribution of this normal distribution with mean m, t is the algorithm step, and uh, it has standard deviation sigma t. Here, i is the identity matrix, so as this green circle indicates the distribution, this normal distribution is isotropic one. Okay, first, the 1 plus 1 evolution strategy generates a candidate xt from this normal distribution. And compares of the magnitude between xt and mt under f. And from this result, it updates the mean m with greedy methods, namely, if fxt is smaller than fmt, xt is the next mean. Or if fmt is smaller than fxt, mean stays here. In addition, the 1 plus 1 yes adopts the standard deviation sigma t. If fxt is smaller or the sampling succeeds, the sigma is 
increased with the coefficient alpha up, which is larger than 1. And if mt is good, mt stays here and the sigma t is decreased with the coefficient alpha down, which is smaller than 1. As I said before, the same AES adopts its covariance matrix and the 1 plus 1 ES brutally adapts. So, the 1 plus 1 ES and the CMA ES shares the basic feature of the algorithm. This adaptation mechanism is surely key to success, but which in turn brings difficulty to our theoretical analysis. Let's see it experimentally. These two figures show the transition of log FMT, red line, and log sigma t, green line. The difference between these two figures is here. In the left, the initial sigma is too small, and in the right, the initial sigma is too large. Of course, now it's set so. But because the 1 plus 1 yes has probabilistic nature, so such situation is possible on the way of optimization. And in such case, as you see, there is a stagnation of the objective function FMT. The trouble is it's hard to prove the stability of the adaptation. There is always some probability that the sigma unfortunately goes too large or too small and the objective function is stuck and can't escape from that point. And additionally, such trouble is also inherent in many adaptation algorithms, which has unbounded parameter. So, the 1 plus 1 is rather simple algorithm as we see before, but we consider it significant to analyze, because a development of such kind of unbounded heuristic adaptation mechanism is still not enough. The next is analyzing a technique to tackle the difficulty about sigma adaptation. First, we design a potential function which estimates how the adaptation of sigma goes well in the perspective of the current best candidate solution MT. This kind of potential function is first proposed in 10 for isotropic convex quadratic function and generalized in 11 for a strongly convex and elliptic smooth function, which is a superset of a convex quadratic function, in order to show a convergence rate is at least constant. We modify this for a general convex quadratic function in order to evaluate a concrete convergence rate. This potential function B has three terms. The first term is log FMT, so we like to analyze how fast this term converges to the minimum. And the rest two terms is to estimate the first term potentially converges by adapting sigma, when it appears to get stuck as we see in the previous. This log plus is the logarithm assured it's not negative. In log plus, both in second and third term, it has sigma t and it is compared to some values about current best mt. If sigma t is too small or too large, the second or third term kicks in. In this case, the transition of log fmt is almost zero, but there can be a constant transition of this potential function because the second term or third term indicates a potential progress of the optimization as sigma t changes with the adaptation mechanism of the 1 plus 1 ES. And the second step is to find a good constant bound of this expectation of one step difference of the potential function V. And at last, with the law of large number of Martingale, we calculate convergence rate, which defined in the next page. Okay, finally, I present our main result, convergence rate of the 1 plus 1 yes on a general convex quadratic function. Let's consider optimization of the 1 plus 1 yes on a function in Q. Q is a set of functions. First, we consider a general convex quadratic function of this form. X star is the optimum and H is a positive definite matrix, so this is a general form of convex quadratic function. And we also consider its monotonic co increasing transformation with Z. Z is a transformation of a scalar, which does not change 
the magnitude correlation as formalized here. And we formally define here upper convergence rate exponential minus A sup and the lower convergence rate A inf. A sup and A inf satisfies the following equalities respectively. These two equalities both argues that some probability is one. Let's see inside. These two terms are the same. And as you see, this is average slope of log distance between mt and x star, or mean and the optimum until t. So this indicates how fast mt converges to the optimum until t. And in the above, we take supremum, and in the below, we take infimum. And the limit under t to infinity is minus a sup or minus a inf, respectively. The reason we take exponential is just a custom in the field of theoretical analysis of optimization algorithms. Finally, this is our results. First, the upper convergence rate is in this order. P capital O of t to infinity exponential minus L over trace h. Trace of h is the sum of all eigenvalues of h. h is here, the Hessian matrix of convex quadratic function. And in addition, we show the order of lower convergence rate. Capital omega of d to infinity exponential minus 1 over d. This is the dimension of the search space. So, we show even eigenvalues other than the largest and the smallest eigenvalues affects upper convergence rate theoretically. This is the result beyond this order. This order is L over UD, which is suggested in the previous research. Our order of lower convergence rate agrees with the case H is the identity matrix, which is analyzed in 10. Obviously, there is a gap. So, cannot we match them? We consider we can. It seems to be tied experimentally as we see in the next page. Let's check tightness of our upper convergence rate order. If our result on upper convergence rate is tight, it holds when optimizing on the objective function of this form, convex quadratic function, with any d, with any trace of h, with any u over l, this term can be bounded with constants from above and from below. What's this term? This is average slope divided by this order. This order is what is suggested from our result. So let's say this is normalized slope and see how it is on a variety of convex quadratic function, changing d, trace of h, or u over l. These four graphs show the normalized slope in the vertical axis. The difference between left and right is in the left two, the eigenvalues of the Hessian matrix, only one eigenvalue is the smallest one, and the, all the rest are the largest eigenvalue. In the right, only one eigenvalue is the largest, u, and uh, all the rest are the smallest. So we take two extreme cases of the distribution of eigenvalues of the Hessian matrix. The horizontal axis of the upper two graphs is the dimension, and the horizontal axis in the below two is u over l under log 10. So as you see, it seems to be between constants for each kind of convex quadratic function. So our result seems to be tied at least with this experiment. This is summary of today. The impact of our study is its first theoretical result of convergence rate of the 1 plus 1 ES on a general convex quadratic function. In addition, this order of upper convergence rate seems to be tight, as we see experimentally. Insight from our result is, in generally, in optimization, difficulty of ill-conditioned problem, including convex quadratic, is often measured with u over l. Our result goes further, namely, a distribution of eigenvalues, trace of h, directly affects convergence rate 
of the 1 plus 1 yes on a general convex quadratic function. I put on the end of this presentation with two future works. First, we seek for a tight analysis of lower convergence rate, which matches our order of upper convergence rate. And what we are interested in currently is to expand the scope of our technique. For example, analyzing convergence rate on strongly convex and elliptic smooth function. That's it. Thank you.